Okay, so this is a four-step approach that you would use to be answering a legal or law question where it's a scenario, where it's a problem, where the exam paper usually would have given you a situation and then the end ask you to advise. And so this will be a very structured method that if you follow, this IRAC method that will enable you to cover every point required and to maximize marks. Now the first step in I, I will stand for issues. I put issue or issues. Sometimes it could be one issue, but that one issue may have several sub-issues. So for example, uh, let's say here now, it could be dealing now with the issue of formation of contract. Whether or not is there a binding agreement. That could be that main issue. But within that main issue of formation of contract, there could be your sub-issues which is whether or not maybe is their offer. Because in order for a contract, there must be an offer. But you also know that an offer is to be discussed together and every time in an exam question, it's together. To contrast from an ITT, from an invitation to treat. So that's part of the issue as well. But of course, information of a binding agreement is not just offer. Of course, there must be acceptance. So therefore, you need to recognize that in your question involving this main issue of formation of contract, that there could be sub-issues. Then maybe it's not just acceptance, but it could be in relation to a very specific aspect of acceptance. Perhaps it could be on counter-offer in that the other party did not accept but gives a counter-offer. Maybe it is concerning the communication of the acceptance, such as perhaps now we discuss this very famous rule called poster rule. And in fact, for poster rule, I'm going to put a star here as a highlight because this is something which is very common in our contract exam paper where they ask you on the poster rule. Now, of course, different exam questions may have a different focus. So maybe it is focusing on offer and ITT. Maybe it's focusing on offer, ITT, and counter-offer. Maybe it may or may not include communication, we don't know. What about this next one? Where perhaps now it could also include this issue of revocation of the offer. In that the offeror, the one who made the offer, changes his mind and revokes the offer. So all these are the possible issues. In fact, what you are now seeing in your screen, these three points here, represents a common topic that, or topics that could come up for the exams. In this order, offer or ITT, is there acceptance? Is there counter offer? Was there communication? What about if the other party were to revoke the offer, right? In fact, let me add on one more now. Um, apart from poster rule, on the issue of communication, uh, there is this other important and common possible exam issue on where they may test you on silence. Can you accept an offer by keeping quiet? Or maybe it could be by conduct. So the fact is there could be 
issues, plural, with an S. Not just one issue, but the main issue, which is formation of contract, and then sub-issues. Right, so that's the first step. And the first step is crucial because if you cannot get the I right, then you can't progress to step two, three or four. Now, for now, what is step two? Step two will deal with your relevant law. Okay, this is step two, relevant law. Now, what would be relevant law? Relevant law would be, for example, now where you must put down your legal principles. So, for example, explain what is an offer. Right. So, explain offer, the law on offer. So, for instance, in your materials from textbooks, perhaps, you might remember this very famous definition that we use from Professor Tritel, and it's quoted in many cases. And he defines an offer, the definition, the legal principle for offer, and he says this. He says, it is an expression of intention willing to be bound to the terms of his offer. So if I am expressing to you something and I demonstrate my intention to be bound, then what I've made to you is an offer. And so what you must do is explain that. Of course, then you talk about, say, for instance, ITT. They explain ITT. So here is where you are explaining. It is not just put down offer. What is an offer? Okay. In the course of explaining, let me add on now to give you a practical exam tip. In the course of your explanation of legal principles, you want to make sure that it is complete and it is thorough. So explain completely what you understand or what you have studied about offer, if that is the issue. Explain what is a counter offer and be thorough. Now, if, for example, a counter offer is not the relevant, let's say now I change the top part here, in that maybe there's no issue of counter offer. Then, in your relevant law, don't discuss counter offer. Discuss what is relevant. That's why the word here is what? Relevant law. But if you conclude or in your first step, you have argued that yes, counter offer is an issue. Then make sure in your R, relevant law, you explain counter offer. What is a counter offer? What many students fail to do is my next part. Provide supporting cases. This part is oftentimes missing. Provide supporting cases. So for offer, what is the case that you use? For invitation to treat ITT, what is the case that you use? This part is the part that I realize or find that many students somehow, either they forget or they don't know they must do it, they don't put it in cases. No, you must. This is a law exam. What is law? Law is not what you read in the papers. Law is not just your sense of right or wrong, justice in your mind. Law comes from cases, common law cases, laws made by judges. You must provide the cases. Now, when we discuss this part of relevant law, you may find that there could be perhaps now contrasting cases. So now I add on here as well, right? To include perhaps contrasting cases. These are cases that perhaps now represent the exceptions or exceptions to the general rule. You would remember that for every general rule, there will be exceptions. For every one case to say something, 
there could be another case saying something else. The good student will be able to talk about one case that says something. The better student will be able to talk about another case, talk about a contrasting case that says something different, that lays down the exception. So for example, let's go back to a very common exam issue. Let's say it is not an issue of offer. And I ask you the question, perhaps, is an advertisement when someone or seller were to advertise to sell his goods, is an advertisement an offer or is it an ITT? That is the first step of practically every question I've seen on offer acceptance in relation to formation of contract. The first issue will always be offer versus ITT. That's the issue I. Then we talk about R, put the relevant law. And you find that there will be one case to say that advertisement is usually an ITT. And even using common sense, you understand that, that whenever someone were to advertise, he is just inviting for an offer. He is just providing information. He is not demonstrating an intention to be bound that he will sell, but is just inviting the buyers who are interested to offer. And when your advertisement is trying to invite for an offer, then that advertisement is not an offer, it's an ITT. And the case is a case called Partridge and Crittenden. So that's a case. But there is a contrasting case. The famous case of Khalil and Carbolic Spookball. Where in that case, also advertisement, but that advertisement was an offer. So in summary right now, you have seen me provide you with cases, two in particular. One case says advertisement is ITT. The other case says advertisement is offer. That's what I meant, that a better student will present both cases. And so you must go through your notes, go through your materials, your textbook, and then be able to put down the relevant cases. Do not put down any case. I find sometimes in exams, students just simply vomit out whatever they, they have studied or whatever they, they remember. Oh, there's a case on offer and they put the case. Ah, there's a case on ITT, they put the case. But is that case relevant? Relevant to what? Relevant to the issue. So if the issue is on advertisement, then refer to cases concerning advertisement. If the case is involving something else, or the issue is involving something else, try to find the most relevant case. And then you need to explain. I'll go back now to the first point. Explain, be complete, be thorough. So it's I, R. Then A is the third step, which is your application. What you do right now is where you are applying the law to the facts of the question. That is what is meant by this stage of application. And when you apply the law to the facts of the question, you need to obviously refer to the facts of the question. So look at the question, and is your question more similar to case A or case B. Argue, right? Apply the law. It's not just saying case A says this, case B says this, case C says that, full stop. No. Imagine that you are a lawyer and a client comes to you with a problem. You say, oh, you know, I've got this problem. Advise me. Then you are a very good lawyer. You know all the cases and you say, oh, there's a case A, there's a case B, there's a case C, and case D. Then you keep quiet. Are you helping your client? You must tell him, uh, there are four cases. 
but for you I apply to his question to his situ situation for you case A case B is not relevant or case A case B may not apply because your situation is slightly different the fact is what happened in a previous case and that legal principle with a particular conclusion when you apply to a different situation with different cases might come to a different conclusion so the law is the same but because you apply the law to facts A conclusion A you apply the same law to facts B different facts in a B case in a B question you get conclusion B different conclusion from the same law just like my early example about advertisement is advertisement all for ITT it depends on the facts it depends on the type of advertisement and we have two cases one case saying ITT the other saying offer so it depends on the facts and that is what you do at the third stage of your answering of exam question the structure this part of application which is three star which is the most important another way in which you can understand application perhaps now also a okay maybe it can stand for arguments where you are arguing the case you think I will argue that in this question based on the law that this is the answer that this is the conclusion argue and sometimes it may be that they are contrasting arguments let me put in brackets now right if you can a good student again will include contrary arguments now when I say contrary arguments this is a recognition that for every one argument there will be an opposing contrary argument now every argument in fact will have two views for the simple reason you cannot argue with yourself if there's only one view and there's no second view what is it to argue and every law case for it to be a case means that they are two different arguments I've never seen a trial with only one view there's no case with only one view if there is a case with only one view it will not be a case nobody will sue you if there's only one view and they agree with your view clearly there is a case that someone is suing you because they don't agree with your view so he has his view he has his argument and you have your argument this is why it becomes a court case so in an exam that's what you must do identify what will party A argue what will party B argue and party A party B of course in a real trial will have their lawyers to use their law to apply so party A will say we have this case and when we apply this to, for my client we have this conclusion party B will say but there's the other case why don't we use this other case which is maybe more similar your case is not so similar so party B will argue his case so you're using cases applying to the facts presenting arguments and then to come to C which is the last part the conclusion the conclusion is actually the easiest the conclusion is maybe one line so let's say now that if this is concerning the issue of formation of contract then you conclude that issue so you may say for example based on the above discussion in conclusion there was an offer made by the seller which the buyer had accepted and therefore there is an agreement that could be perhaps one way of how you can conclude 
or it could be the opposite. Don't assume that every time it will be a favorable answer or conclusion. It could be, you say, based on the above, the acceptance that was communicated was too late. By the time the offeree communicated his acceptance to accept the offer, the offeror had already revoked the offer. And because the offeror had revoked the offer, following this particular case, again, you must have your case name, right? Following this particular case, there is no acceptance because the offer was revoked. And therefore, without acceptance, there is no agreement. That's also a conclusion. So your conclusion can be either one or the other based on your arguments. That's based on the law. That's based on the issue. So I want you to see that this four-step approach is something that's really crucial that you must use in this order. Whatever is the issue, I've given you one example. There are, of course, different issues. Your law must be to supporting those issues. And then you will use your law to argue, to come to a conclusion. And if you use the IRAC format in this structured manner, this will allow you a chance to ensure a very thorough, full, complete discussion to maximize marks. Students who don't do well could be that they fail to address either the I, R, or A, or C thoroughly or properly. For example, it may be that in the exam question that you discuss this issue of counter offer but you fail to identify this issue. If you fail to identify the issue, you lose marks there. In fact, even for students who maybe perhaps have correctly identified all the issues. But what about here? Were you able to put down the cases? Were you able to explain thoroughly and completely? Do you put down the general rule and exception? So maybe your I, you get it right, but the R, you fail. Even if you put down the I and the R correctly, you may fail here. The application where you didn't identify or see the facts properly enough to use the facts to raise certain arguments. And so the facts are important. Be depending as to what the question tells you, use the facts, use the question. And then from the facts itself, you can use that to argue, to come to, of course, your conclusion. Okay, so with that, we I've given you a very thorough approach to answering exam questions. And that is this IRAC format. <music>